Hello everyone, Oliver Drape here, Training and Trail Manager for Hike Vision North UK. What I'm going to show today is the latest additions to the Hike Vision product family, and what we have here is our Smart Managed Switches. So, what is a Smart Managed Switch? Well, we know a conventional PoE switch uh, not only provides a data link uh, to the device that's connected into it, but it also provides power down the Ethernet cable, therefore, powering your IP camera or access control device at the other end. Now some of the pain points that can be found with a conventional PoE switch is that if a device goes offline or you've got potential bandwidth issues or there's any potential network issues whatsoever on the network, it can be very difficult to locate what and where it is the actual problem. Uh, sometimes installers have to rely on uh, drawn out plans to actually work out where devices are located on the network, what the configuration is and it can be quite difficult and quite time consuming. A smart Managed Switch, however, not only tells you which in particular port that a device is connected to, it even tells us the name of the device that's actually connected to that device as well. Also, when we add these uh, Smart Managed Switches into our VMS, such as Hike Central Professional, the Hike Central Professional uh, VMS will automatically build the topology for you. So it will show you where your device is connected. It will tell you what is connected to your device. It will tell you the bandwidth that is going through that device as well. So again, they're very easy for your fault finding. Uh, now all these PoE switches here uh, do support uh, 6 kilovolt uh, surge protection. Uh, in addition as well, they all uh, support our super uh, long transmission mode as well. So you can run longer runs of Ethernet cable for your uh, AF and AT PoE cameras. And when we say long transmission mode, what we're referring to is usually when you're running uh, runs of Cat5, Cat6 cable, usually it's no more than 100 meters in any one run. However, when you toggle each individual port into long transmission mode, uh, this will let you run a Cat5 cable up to 250 meters uh, and a Cat6 cable up to 300 meters. However, you do need to bear in mind that when you do toggle each port into long transmission mode, it does restrict the throughput of each port to a 10 megabit port. Now, the three PoE switches I've got here, we've got the first one here, it's a four port PoE. So four ports uh, PoE plus the additional Ethernet port to your uplink back to your main network. We've got our eight port PoE switch here. Uh, so eight port PoE plus two fiber optic uh, uh, ports there as well. And then finally below here, we've got our 16 port PoE switch. So 16 port PoE plus the two fiber optic. So the four port one here is 100 megabit uh, only. These are currently uh, released at the moment. So you can purchase, speak to your distributor about these. Uh, the eight port and 16 port that I've got here, these are all gigabit ports. Uh, these are due to be released this November. So what we'll do now, we will get these uh, put into the network and we'll see exactly what they can do and what they look like. Okay everyone, so here I am uh, logged into uh, Hike Central at the moment. So if I just go to the uh, health monitoring section uh, here at the minute, uh, we can see what traditionally the health monitoring would actually look like in here. It'll tell me if we've got any cameras online or offline, near doors, under vehicle surveillance systems, alarm inputs, and other uh, devices on my network. Now I can uh, obviously click on uh, camera and take a look at what cameras are on there, uh, tell me if they're recording or not. So it does give me some information, but still uh, quite limited uh, in the sense. So what I'll do now is I'll just go into the uh, web client of Hike Central, which I'm in here uh, at the moment. And what I'll do, I'm now going to add in my smart uh, switches. So at the minute on the encoding device, I can see I've got my one NVR in there. I'm now going to go down to network transmission device. Uh, if I click into here uh, and here, I should be able to add in uh, the network transmission devices on my network. So automatically, Hike Central has found my three uh, smart menu switches on my network. Uh, now, just to let you know, I've not done anything uh, special with these devices whatsoever. All I've done is activate them by uh, giving them a password and then changing the IP address so they can communicate on my network. Other than that, I've done nothing else whatsoever. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select all three devices there and then click add to device list. Now, because I give these the same password, I can just copy the password for all three of these and do it at the exact same time and then click add. And there we go. They're now added in. Just give that a moment or two just to refresh and hopefully these will just show as successfully added. And there we have it. So what I'll do now, I'm just gonna change these, just give them a, a friendly name, just so they're not added by their IP address. Uh, so I'll call this one uh, Smart Switch uh, 1. Save that. Uh, one into the 2, I'm gonna change to Smart Switch 2. And then finally Smart Switch number 3.
Okay, now yeah. So I've added these into Hike Central now and just added these devices into my uh, list. And that's it, nothing else more with this now. So if I now go to the control client of Hike Central, go back to health monitoring, this is what it currently looks like. If we look at the top here, I've got a little red dot there telling me that I've got uh, new information to come from the server. So I've just resynchronized now. And let's see how the health monitoring section uh, looks. And there we have it. So it's automatically built the topology for me. I've not had to tell it what connected to what in particular port. But as we can see here, uh, I've got my three uh, smart managed switches now uh, added into it and it's automatically built the topology uh, for me. So again, you can see here, uh, any cameras show the camera icon uh, like this. Any decoders, I change the icon to a decoder icon. Uh, likewise, the smart switches also do have uh, a different icon. So you can see quite clearly what devices are on here uh, just by looking at the topology. If you see below as well, we can see um, the actual um, links to say what sort of links they've got. And it also tells us whether the lines are actually busy, congested or anything is actually uh, disconnected. So for example, uh, here's my IP dome. I've got a PTZ on here. I can click onto this, uh, go into details, see the details of my PTZ. So it's telling me here uh, whether it's online, whether it's offline, all the information about that device. I can even go to actually the, the playing function, actually play it. I can even do PTZ control uh, actually from uh, the actual smart switch itself from here as well as all the usual uh, device details. If I go into the actual smart switch itself and look at details, uh, I can see here which in particular ports uh, are online and connected and offline. I can see what power consumption is being used, what the RAM and CPU is, again, what devices are connected and what IP address they're on, the status of each port, the port statistics regarding the bandwidth going through these, and then find any device and alarms of these ones. So what I'll do, I'll just disconnect a camera from here and just see uh, what this looks like once it's disconnected. So I'll just pull one of the cables now, uh, just to simulate as if something uh, has been disconnected or something that has lost power or gone offline. So we'll just give that a moment or two. And then if I hit the uh, refresh button um, at the top, and there we can see now we've got something in red there telling me there's something uh, wrong on the network. I can click on there and go into details. Uh, if I go to device alarm now, uh, straight away at the bottom, I can see that one of the ports is showing red. So that's an alarm there on that one. Go to device alarm and it's telling me that I've lost PO interface on one of them and it's also lost a network connection on that particular port on port number 11. So I'm just refresh this again. It should indicate which has actually gone offline. So here we can see that it's the Ultra Series 5 series camera. My Deep in Mind MVR has also flagged an issue. We go to details and see why. It's telling me because it's lost the connection, therefore it's no longer recording that camera because we know that one is offline. So when we zoom in, we can see that link is now red. So if I had to zoom in a little bit just to give you a look, we can see it's got that little X in there as well, which tells us that that's been physically uh, disconnected. And it's some of the details of that one there to show me that obviously that one is off as well. So what we'll do, I'll just reconnect this back in and just see what happens. So after a moment or two, once that's back in there, I'm just gonna to go to uh, refresh at the top, and refresh this, and we can now see that is now uh, back online as well. And I can see the details, it's showing me everything is all fine. If I just go back to my smart, just go to uh, details here. Uh, I can see it's still got the alarm notification on that port there. So I just go to device alarm now, select both those alarms, acknowledge them, clear that off. And then now when I refresh, everything should go back to normal, back online. On the left hand side here as well, we can also see the entire state of the actual server. Uh, they receive network bandwidth going over the entire network um, as well. So there we go, uh, a great uh, bit of kit. Uh, if you do want any more information about this, uh, please go to the link below or scan the QR code to go to our online data sheet. Uh, as always, speak to your distributor. They'll also provide you, they'll provide you the information uh, about these products uh, as well as the prices. Uh, as I previously mentioned, the 100 megabit version is out for release now uh, and you can order from your distributor. The gigabit versions uh, here are due to release uh, in November. So speak to your distributor. They'll be able to give you more information on when the dates uh, these will be available. Uh, as well as any pricing. Thank you.